Good evening, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live. And uh, I was reading earlier today in the book of Matthew here, and it made me think of several places in Zechariah, of course, the book of Revelation, Matthew, etc. It made me think a little bit differently on some of the uh, judgment scriptures that we see. Like, for example, Zechariah 14. When it says here, Behold, a day of the Lord cometh, when thy spoil shall be divided in the midst of you. For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle, and the city shall be taken, and the houses rifled, the women ravished, and half of the city shall go forth into captivity. But the residue of the people shall not be cut off from, from the city. Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations, as when he fighteth in the day of battle. And his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem on the east. And the Mount of Olives shall be cleft in the midst thereof toward the east and toward the west, so that there shall be a very great valley. Half of the mountain shall remove toward the north and half toward the south. And you shall flee to the valley of the mountains, for the valley of the mountains shall reach into Azel, Yea, you shall flee like as you fled from before the earthquake in the days of Uzziah, king of Judah, and the Lord. My God shall come and all the holy ones with you. Now, <clears throat> we could stop there. You could read on as well, uh, especially in light of the fact of verse 7. And there shall be one day which shall be known as the Lord's, not day nor night, but it shall come to pass that in the evening time, there shall be light. It shall come to pass in that day that the living water shall go out from Jerusalem, half of them towards the eastern sea, half of them towards the western sea. In summer and in winter it shall be. Now, I am beginning to feel, and I don't know for sure, I don't teach this as a doctrine, but I'm beginning to wonder if some of this has not got an allegoric meaning to it. Um, the, the splitting of the olives, the Mount of Olives, the part of the west, part of the east. And I, when I show you something here in, um, in Matthew's Gospel... You, I think you'll see where I'm coming from on this. Anyway, I just I want to share that one with you. At the same token, if we look at uh, I think in the book of Revelation, for all nations shall come and worship before you, before you, for thy judgments are made manifest. Um, I'm focusing on the key word all nations in this case here. Uh, let's see, Matthew's Gospel, the 24th chapter. And this Gospel of the Kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. When you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place, whosoever readeth, let him understand. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take any of his things out of his house. Notice, flee to the mountains. And I think that's exactly what we have in Zechariah 14. Uh, shall reach to Azel, you shall, you shall flee like as you fled from the earthquake in the days of Uzziah, king of Judah. And this is when the when when Jerusalem, when he stands there and puts his feet on the Mount of Olives and it splits from east to west. Now the fleeing has definitely took place back during the days of Jesus. That's one thing that, that kind of has made me wonder about this in light of Matthew 24. Matthew 24, by the way, covers more than one space of time. It does cover during the times after his crucifixion and resurrection, but it also covers the time in a future time space as well. Um, so I'm, I'm really just looking at this very carefully, and I wanted to share some of that with you. All right, let me jump over here to the Hebrew Matthew, and, I, and you'll see where I, I'm kind of going with this. Um,
this actually, this is where Jesus, when he says, let me see, I think it's verse, starting in verse 31, again, Jesus said, right, right there, so you see where we're at, to his disciples, when the Son of Man comes in his revelation with his angels, I think in King James comes in his glory, then he will sit upon the throne of his glory. All nations will be gathered before him. There's the all nations again. And he will separate them as a shepherd separates the sheep and the goats. He will place the sheep on his right and, on, uh, and the goats on his left. Now, thinking out loud with you, as I look at that, I think about, too, that splitting of the Mount of Olives. One mountain going one way, one going the other way, east and west, right? And again, I don't say this is a doctrinal thing. I'm, I'm, I'm basically just kind of sharing this with you, out, you know, as, they, as the old saying goes, right? Uh, I'm, I'm kind of sharing my thoughts out loud with you. Uh, I haven't made any decisions on what I think about it as of yet. I just find it interesting. So I figured I'd share it with you while I'm studying this myself. Anyway, when the Son of Man comes in his revelation with his angels, then he will sit upon the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate them, as you know, as, you know, as he said, the shepherd separates the sheep and the goats. He will place the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. <clears throat> Then he will say to those on his right, enter the, enter the bless, uh, blessed of my father, inherit for yourselves the kingdom of heaven prepared for you from the creation of the world until now. Because I was hungry, you gave me eat, uh, to eat. I was thirsty, you gave me to drink. I was a wayfarer. You took me in naked, you clothed me sick, and you visited me. Of course, we know the story. They, they don't know when they ever did this to them. And then he goes on to say, and as much as you did to the least of my little ones, you did it unto me. Uh, and let me just, I want to find that portion so we make sure. <clears throat> he said, truly I said to you, every time you, okay, the king will answer and say, because they asked, sick visited you in prison, you came and came to you. The king will answer and say to them, truly I say to you that every time you did it to one of the needy of these, my brothers, even the little ones like these, you did it to me. Also, he will say to those on his left, depart from me, you cursed, and go to eternal fire for the place prepared for you with Satan and his angels. Because I was hungry and you did not give me to eat. I was thirsty and you did not give me to drink. I was a wayfarer. And as we know, you know, all the different things and they didn't have anything to do with him. Now, what's fascinating to me, even when he says here, depart to that eternal fire. Even as we've read in Matthew 24, you know, the, 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 the stars and everything else get out of their place. They move out of their place in, in the course of, of, the, of the heavens and things. It's almost as if it is like what we call planet X is passing by. And could there be something to do with that. But then again, as I mentioned to you, when we looked at Zechariah, you know, the, 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 the Mount of Olives being split, you know, we have that. Half of the valley goes one way, half goes the other way. Could that be an allegory? Could that be a representation of those that had showed the kindness to him because one's on his right, one's on his left. Could that be what that represents there? Could we actually be seeing Zechariah 14 being manifest in the very, what Jesus speaks about over in uh, uh, the book of Matthew? And I'm using the Hebrew Matthew for, for reading this in Matthew uh, chapter 25. And it's interesting if you'll notice too, though, because Matthew chapter 25 proceeds all these horrendous things of Matthew 24. And then he says to them, I will say to you, what, what, whenever you did not do this to one of these needy, even one of the little ones like these, you did not do it to me, then these will go to eternal abhorrence and the righteous and to eternal life. 
Hmm. And then, of course, the judgment came shortly thereafter. Um, let me just look at some of the other ones. I had two in Isaiah chapter 2. Many people shall go and say, Come ye and let us go up into the mountain of the Lord, the house of God, of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. And that was truly Christ himself fulfilling that. He shall judge between the nations. Notice that. He shall judge between the nations and decide for many peoples, and they shall beat their swords into plowshares. By the way, that's another one I wanted to share with you too. I have heard talk uh, going around right now that Israel will end up becoming disarmed because of the evils that they're doing to Gaza. If that happens, and it may, it may, it is only a ploy being played right before your eyes. Because they're going to say it is scripture being fulfilled. They shall beat their swords into plowshares. And I guarantee you, they will use that to their advantage if they disarm Israel. And they will say they have become the, 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 the pinnacle for God. And, and that all the nations are going to come to Jerusalem and they're no longer armed. They no longer need to have their weapons. But I guarantee you one thing. They're not going to disarm them without enacting those Noahide laws in its place. You can count on it. O house of Jacob, come ye, let us walk in the light of the Lord. For thou hast forsaken thy people, the house of Jacob. For they are replenished from the east and from the soothsayers like the Philistines. And they please themselves in the blood of aliens, or brood of aliens. Their land also is full of silver and gold. Neither is there any end of their treasures. Ay, ay, ay. That's interesting. For they replenish from the east and with soothsayers. And uh, let me run back over here real quick and see something here. I just out of curiosity. No, it wasn't there. It would actually be in 25. Uh, I, well, maybe, no, maybe it is in Revela or Matthew 24. Uh, to his right, yeah, yo, gosh, no, it was actually in Zechariah 14. I don't remember now. I lost my place on that. Anyway, I just want to share some of that with you there. And also, too, just as a reminder for those of you that may not know this scripture here. Uh, this is in Zechariah chapter 8, verse 23. It's often quoted as a modern-day fulfillment when it was actually fulfilled 2,000 years ago. Ko'omad Yehovah Sava'ot ve'amim he'hama ashad yahikiziku ashru anashim mechol uh, all right, so thus saith the Lord of hosts in those days it shall come to pass that in ten men shall take hold out of all the languages of the nations, shall even take hold of the skirt of him that is a Jew. Okay, that's what it says. They will take a hold, the wing of Ish, a Jewish man, Yehudi. All right, or a Judean man, either way you want to call that. Lemor, saying, Nelecha imchem, we will go with you. The only part that's the plural is because it's talking about the apostles. Ki shamanu, because we have heard Elohim imchem, that God is with you. That was because they had taken a hold of the skirt or the wing of the Jewish man, the singular man which was Jesus Christ, and they therefore wanted to go with them, those apostles that had believed upon him. That's where the fulfillment of all this was taking place. Anyway, I just thought I'd throw that in there for you at the end. Like I said, I'm kind of just thinking out loud with you. I don't really know what to think of this as of yet, but really uh, you're looking at Matthew 24 and chapter 25. So when you finish 24, all these judgments, and you go into 25, he goes into the parables there, 
And it just seems to reason that that's where he's taken that to. Then you can get into Revelation. Uh, we can go into a lot more, not just chapter 15, chapter 18, etc. There's so many more we could get into as well. So I'm just kind of going through those studies and I'll update you as I do. God bless you. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your support of the broadcast we do here. And uh, look, you know, my wife even made a statement the other day. She said, you want to support the broadcast, but yet do something for yourself? Why don't you try LifeWaves products X39? Uh, it will help you, and at the same time, you can support the broadcast by doing that. God bless you. Thank you for listening. Stephen and Yana Benoom.